Rebecca Gentry and today we are working on making prints to an inkjet printer from CS6, Photoshop CS6. Before you even open your pictures, I just want to point out the edit color settings option. This is important so that you don't accidentally have a color space in Photoshop like sRGB, which is the smallest color space. Um, apply itself to your image which might have been captured in a much larger color space. So um, sometimes people, especially when they're sharing machines, forget to check the color settings even before they open their pictures. So I prefer to edit everything in Pro Photo RGB because I shoot in camera raw mostly. Some folks like to leave the color setting at Adobe RGB 1998, particularly if they're printing, because the color rendering seems to better match what comes out on like an Epson luster paper. Personally, I leave mine in Profoto RGB and then soft proof with the paper and printer profile that I'm going to be using along the way, and we'll talk about that in another tutorial. Make sure you check mark ask when opening, ask when pasting. Um, what this does is that when you will be notified whenever the embedded profile in another document that you're opening does not match the working space. This is the working space. Um, and you want to make sure that you have the color working space that's desirable for your particular workflow. So this basically ensures that you're going to be asked which color space you want to work in. So very important under edit color settings to get this set up before you begin. I'm going to assume that I'm done editing this image and that we're ready to print. I'm going to choose File Print and you'll notice that CS6 has a different interface than previous versions of Photoshop when it comes to the print dialog box. I find this to be greatly improved and very helpful. Here you can see you can choose between a landscape or a um, portrait mode. I'm going to click on print settings and we'll see what comes up under here. Um, all of the things that are familiar, this is the OS 10. Uh, this is calling up the OS 10 controls in the printer. Um, a, a couple days ago I went ahead and set my paper size to 17 by 22 sheets. Here you can see um, the various sizes available. Um, and somebody asked me the other, day, the other day how large is an A4. Um, that's a little bit more of a European size. Uh, Super B is 13 by 19 and so on and so forth. So you have all your sizes here as well as the ability to set up custom sizes. So make sure you have your size correct as well as if it's sheet or roll. Your printer is very sensitive to the paper size. If it's not correct, you will get stuck and it will not print. Important. Because we're working with a color image, I'm going to call up the um, paper profile that's been designed for my printer via ColorSync. The profile is stored in the ColorSync profiles folder in my library. Um, and so that's important is the color matching option. Print settings is the next most important thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and load the paper in manually instead of putting it in the paper tray. This is because it's a rather large sheet and it tends to work better when it's manually loaded. The, medium, the media type is also important. This refers to the thickness of the paper and helps determine, helps the printer determine how much ink to put down. The media type automatically refers to Epson paper since it's what shipped with the Epson um, printer. But Hanemule, I'm printing on a Hanemule Fine Art Pearl um, in the instructions PDF that I downloaded or that came with the batch of paper. It should tell you what the recommended media type is for an Epson printer. Um, and this particular media type that's recommended is the premium semi-gloss or premium luster. Again, um, we're printing in color. The color settings for the printer are off because we're using the color sync profile for this paper and printer. Also according to Hanemuel, the print quality that I want to use is 1440 dpi. That refers to how much ink I put down. It would seem like this would be better, but oftentimes you can't see a quality difference and it just uses and wastes more ink. 
So I'm going to switch back to 1440 DPI. Personally, I like to leave high speed off so that it does a thorough job of printing. When you're doing proofs, however, you can leave high speed on and the print will come out faster. So we went ahead and looked at layout and chose our paper size. We went ahead and looked at color matching and it made sure that color sync was enabled. And we went ahead and went to print settings and chose our, our feed type the thickness or media type, and how much ink or DPI we want to assign. So I'm going to go ahead and choose save. You want to check these every time because even though you save it, it doesn't mean it will stick. Now I'm going to look at the color management. It says remember to disable the printer's color management in the print settings dialog box. And we did that. We turned, we said no color management. This is because Photoshop is going to manage the colors. And I've downloaded from the internet the Hannah Mule, Hannah Mule Fine Art Pearl profile, which is designated for my particular printer, the Epson 4800. So you want to go to the paper manufacturer's website and find the profile section, find your printer. Not all printers have, can support profiles. Very specific photo quality printers, um, Canon, HP, and Epson. Um, but not all models. So you want to make sure before you invest in a printer that your model can handle paper profiles. So I went to the Hanamil Fine Art website. I found the Fine Art Pearl paper and I found my printer and I downloaded this profile. I put it, um, if you have a PC, you can right click on the file. It will install itself. If you have a Mac, it needs to go in your library, in the color sync folder, in the profiles folder and I'll show that in class. I'm going to go ahead and um, make sure that normal printing is on. I like to uncheck black point compensation. The most popular two settings are relative or perceptual and you can read about how they differ down here in the description. I'm going to read, uh, leave this on perceptual. Um, so this looks pretty good um, and I'm just going to say OK. Uh, earlier today, I was able to turn on the 16-bit data printing, so I'm not sure why I can't check mark there that. There must be a reason. So if I wanted to um, print a 16-bit file, normally it has to do with the printer you select. Some printers support 16-bit files, some don't. I thought this one did, but maybe I'm wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Position and size, you can go ahead and scale to fit the media here. This was going a little bit big, so I hit scale to fit media. It made it a little smaller. This was taken with a 22 megapixel camera, which is not quite enough to get a optimum 360 PPI, but 240 PPI is really, really good. Um, so the image should look fine. You can also, um, you know, if you don't scale, you can uncheck the center and you can move this around as you like. You can also click and drag and center it wherever you like. I'm just going to, though, leave it on center and choose scale to fit media. Here you can preview um, the print area in any metric system that works for you. Under printing marks, if you want to see some crop marks or registration marks, these will print out on your image, so you want to be careful about that. Make sure and choose only the ones that you need or want or nothing at all. Functions. This is interesting. If you need to flip the image for any reason, you can do that here. If you need to invert the image for any reason, you can do that here. This is more um, helpful when doing digital negatives for printing. Um, alternative images or in the black and white darkroom. I can also set up a background here if I want. Pure black is my background. I can type that in. And instead of white, you see the background shifts to pure black. You can also choose um, a slight border if you want in uh, pixels. I think though, the, what's interesting is the border is black and we're not gonna see that against the background unless I change it to 255 again. Change the background again to 255 and here you can see the black border that I added. I added a, a three point black border. If you want to bleed the image off the page you can. I'm going to go ahead and skip that. Postscript is for non-inkjet printers so I'm going to leave that off. I'm not even going to look at that. 
And then I'll go ahead and hit print. Um, when you hit print, you will not get another dialog box. It spools directly to the printer. So it's important to double check all of your settings in advance. And then I went ahead, I've gone ahead and sent my image. Um, down here at the bottom, you can see that my printer should show up in the dock. Um, and I don't see it yet. There it is, bouncing, bouncing. When it sh once it shows up in the dock, that means the image uh, has spooled and I can click on that and if I want to say, um, if I want to look at the job, I can look at it and in this case I'm going to delete it because I'm not quite ready to print this image. That's how we print a color image. Printing a black and white image is similar but with a few different settings. I'm still going to choose Command P or File Print and it brings up my dialog box. But the Epson is special because it has what's called an advanced black and white um, color uh, adjustments which are done in the printer. So this is um, a very unusual workflow. It's different than the color workflow. We're still going to go to print settings but we're going to make a few changes. The, profile, the layout looks good. The paper size is correct. Under color matching, what's different is I'm going to say the Epson printer is going to control the color. And you would never, never recommend this for a color image, but with a black and white image, because the advanced black and white um, preferences in the um, Epson are unusual and interesting, we're going to go ahead and choose that. Basically, Epson has designed a way to make a rich black so that instead of just using the gray blacks the grays and the blacks, it, it puts down a color underneath the blacks, which gives it a richer tonality. And that has to be performed in the printer. So we're going to let the printer control the color this time. And then we're going to go to print settings. I'm using the same paper manual feed, the media type is correct. The color, however, we're not going to be using color, we're going to be using advanced black and white photo. We only get this option um, so long as we choose the correct color matching, um, and that is the Epson color controls. If you don't have this set, it's going to be grayed out when you go here to find the advanced black and white photo. There's lots of different toning you can do, sepia, warm tone, cool tone. I like the neutral tone for this series. I'm still using the 1440 DPI, which is recommended for my Hanamil Fine Art Pearl. I'm going to uncheck high speed and I'm going to hit save. So that takes care of this dialog box, very important. Then when I go to color management, you'll notice this has changed from where we were before to the printer managing the color, and that's okay because we're taking advantage of the advanced black and white mode. I'm going to choose this time to send 16-bit data. This might be only available when the printer manages colors, but that's very strange. I'll have to look into that. I'm going to leave it on color, a uh, relative color metric, just like I did before. I'm going to close this dialog box, check my position and size. I think for this, um, I want the bottom to be a little more weighted, so I'm just going to change the top to be slightly smaller and give it a weighted look. Printing and marks, functions, I think this would look nice with just a little bit of a border. I like to measure my borders in points, just even like a one point border would be nice around the image. And when I'm ready, I'll hit print to send. So hopefully this covers both color workflow and advanced black and white workflow for the Epson printers and uh, Photoshop CS6. As always, you can email me if you have any questions. See you in class.